talk about our uh, president, the champion of capitalism, champion of capitalism, uh, who today um, ordered, uh, take effect immediately, that um, <clears throat> U.S. renters cannot be evicted uh, because they don't pay the rent. So they can be evicted for other reasons. We'll get to that. But they can't be evicted if the reason is that they haven't paid the rent. Uh, and this is a this is a, uh, a national moratorium uh, where some states had passed it. But only I think it was only um, 16 states had it. 34 states did not. So uh, this affects everybody, including the states that did not have the uh, moratorium. Uh, they are now uh, required to... Uh, to not, so if you're a landlord, if you own a building, uh, if you own a house, if you own an apartment and you have renters and they decide that they cannot or they just decide they don't want to, but supposedly they have to be able to show that they cannot pay it because of COVID, uh, that uh, you cannot evict them. You cannot evict them. Now, they still owe you the rent. So theoretically, you will get the rent at some point in time. But the federal government has decided, and, and the interesting thing is that Trump did this. Uh, he, had, he had, a few weeks ago, uh, for federal, for properties that had federal loans, he had basically said landlords in those properties couldn't evict somebody because they couldn't pay their rent. Now, this goes beyond that. This is everybody. This is all landlords. This is the entire country. You cannot evict somebody if they don't pay rent. Now, now think about what this means. I, I mean, I was just going to say, it's interesting. In order to do that, because the president, you would think, doesn't have constitutional power to order such a thing. I mean, this is a... Think about the scale of violation of contract law. Think about the scale of the lack of rule of law. Think about the scale of sacrificing one group of people to another group of people. And the president, in normal times, you would think, doesn't have that power, should maybe never have that power. So what the president here did was he made it a decree by the CDC. And what they've done is this is a public health issue. This is not to screw landlords from rent. This is not to help renters who have lost their jobs. This is a public health issue, a public health issue. And the way it works, the way it works is that it's a public health risk. It's a public health risk if people lose their jobs and become homeless. And if they become homeless and they're out in the streets and they congregate around homeless shelters, I guess, or other places, then they are more likely to get COVID or to give other people COVID. And um, so in order to help us from a public health perspective, of course, this is a president who refuses to wear, who doesn't wear a mask, who has mass gatherings where people don't wear masks, doesn't seem to give one iota about public health. But in this context, God forbid, uh, you know, people lose their homes. Of course, you know, how many people actually can lose their homes? How many landlords are, are going to be willing to negotiate? Because the fact is, it's not like if you kick somebody out, it's easy to replace them right now. There are a lot of people looking probably because, hey, it's, it's, it's rough economic times. But no, we're using the public health excuse in order to be, to impose dictatorial, dictatorial uh, mandates on the people. To hell with individual rights, to hell with contract law, to hell with the right of owners, landlords, to actually make a living, to get a return on their investment. To hell with all of that. We're going to protect renters. Now, why do you think Trump would do this, right? Clearly, he doesn't care about COVID. That can be the reason. He's illustrated that in a whole variety of ways. So why is he doing this? I mean, it's pretty obvious. This is very popular. It just tells you a lot about the American people right now that something like this is very popular. 
it's very popular. It's a way to buy votes. It's, it's a way to show sympathy. It's a way to show that he's a good altruist. And again, this is a, this is a good way to use altruism, right? He's not doing it because he's an altruist. He's doing it in order to appeal to the altruism of voters. It's a populist election gimmick. Or it could be just an attempt to have people love him. You know, as a, as a narcissist, that is, a, that is an important that is important to have, to be loved, to be loved by the people. So he's using a cynical means, the CDC. This is classic authoritarianism. Use whatever government agencies you can to get the decree you want to institute the authoritarian measure that you deem necessary. It's disgusting. It's horrible. It's pathetic. I mean, it was disgusting enough when Congress did it. Congress did this as well, right? But now, because you can't negotiate a deal with Congress, to do it by these means, and for anybody to protect that, oh, Trump just went along with Congress because what choice did he have? Uh, you know, he had to do something. Now it's not about going along with Congress. Now this is something the Trump administration has initiated, as initiated. So, this is pure politics. This is pure appeal to altruism and, uh, you know, using COVID and using the CDC like this is just horrible. It's just horrific. Now, this is going to get zero sympathy zero sympathy because um, people hate landlords. I've seen a number of stories. I've seen a number of people coming out and saying, you know, this isn't enough. Landlords shouldn't be able to evict people for any reason. Any reason. So, so, so Barry Bernstein, you as a libertarian support this. <laughs> You as a libertarian support this. This isn't Democrats. This is Trump doing this. The Trump administration doing it. There are no Democrats in sight. Democrats are not in the White House. This is a Trump policy, which he is proud of. So how, how is this Democrats? Jesus. I mean, even libertarians, people who call themselves libertarians, are now justifying tr a, massive grabs of government power, massive violations of individual rights, Massive violations of the rights of landlords. Massive violations of contract law. Why? Because Trump did it. Therefore, it must be good. It cannot be bad. It must be good. This is the kind of Trump lobotomy syndrome that I've described in the past. No, this is authoritarian. And even if you want to vote for Trump, even if you want to vote for Trump, to justify this means you're undermining all of the values you represent. If you really believe in freedom, if you really believe people should make decisions for themselves, if you really believe in that economic decisions should be based between renter and landlord, and that the government has no say in this, then there is zero, no justification for what Trump has just done, other than it's Trump. And he's an authoritarian. He's central planner in chief. I've called him for years. And this is just one more example of this. Right? Now, it turns out that you can evict people for other reasons. You just can't evict them for rent. Some people are complaining about that. Uh, and what's probably going to happen is the, this is, uh, the, the moratorium is for four months until the first of the year. Uh, a, a few things are going to happen. One is if your rent is uh, due at the end of this month, uh, not if your rent is due, if your contract is up at the end of this month, your landlord is probably going to go on a month-to-month -month basis. And then if you skip a payment, he'll he won't evict you. The contract will just be up. So gone are long-term rental contracts for as long as this is around. Um, also, landlords are going to look for reasons to evict you. If you don't pay rent, they'll look for other reasons. You're too loud. You're too noisy. You're disturbing, you're doing some other things, uh, they're going to find ways to evict you, and it's going to kind of force their hand 
to try to find other things. And you could go on and on and on about kind of the manipulations. Plus, we all know that once the election is over, there will be a lot of pressure on whoever gets elected, whoever gets elected. There'll be a lot of pressure to hand renters a check so that they can pay their rent. I mean, this isn't the end of it. Indeed, there's already calls that in the next stimulus, so-called stimulus package, there'll be a hundred billion dollars, a hundred billion dollars for renter relief, right? In emergency rental assistance, it's called. And, you know, nobody's going to object to that. Certainly Trump is not going to object to that. If Biden wins, Biden's not going to object to that. That is, that is a given that all of this is going to be forgiven uh, or, or it's going to be subsidized by the government in some way. In the meantime, if you're a landlord, you haven't been able to collect rent uh, from in, in many states for a long time. You're not going to be able to collect rent for the next four months for many of the people you rent from, who rent from you. Uh, if you, it, it, you know, if, if, if you're doing this to provide income for yourself and your family so you can live off of that, that income is gone. That income is gone. And you are on your own. To hell, to hell with you, right? Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna care, right? Nobody's gonna provide you with any subsidies because you're a, you're a landlord. We'll get to the landlord idea. If you're a big company, or if you're a, a large developer who builds uh, apartment complexes, rents them out, well, now you know that the contracts you have are meaningless. That the government, at the drop of the hat, can declare an emergency and take your livelihood away, can destroy your company. You still, whether you're an individual company, uh, a wealthy individual, a middle-class individual, a struggling individual, you still have to pay your mortgages. There's no moratorium on mortgages. There's no moratorium on your debts. There's no moratorium on, your, on the people you employ. You're not going to lay off everybody for four months and then rehire them. And yet you have to keep maintaining the buildings. You have to keep keeping them in decent shape. You have to keep cleaning the pool. You have to keep doing these things. Those are all expenses for which you do not have income anymore. Basically, this is a policy that takes from those that have or takes from those that the politicians in charge think have to give to those in need. This is pure redistribution. This is pure government intervention in the economy, pure violation of individual rights. And a disgusting, disgusting, cynical vote-getting ploy by the president of the United States. And look, I don't let the Democrats off the hook because the Democrats will do the same thing. And they would do it through legislation. I find it actually more dishonest. More dishonest. Given, uh, given that he's doing it without legislation. This is, again, the, the ruling through government agencies, ruling by executive fiat, ruling through executive orders. And when Obama did it, oh my God, you guys freaked out, freaked out when Obama did it. But Trump is your guy. So he can, he can do executive orders all he wants. He can do whatever the hell he wants. And so many of you will support him in spite of that. Andrew asks if there's been any criticism of this on the right. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen anything today. I've been watching the news, nothing. I, I put in an, uh, an op-ed uh, with the Wall Street Journal. We'll see if the Wall Street Journal takes an op-ed that I wrote about this. This is truly disgusting, despicable, ridiculous. And the fact that the right is not all over this, the fact that Republicans are not all over this, shows you the complete bankruptcy, complete bankruptcy of the right. Now, let's talk a little bit, let's talk a little bit about Landlords, even the word, what is a landlord? He's a lord of the land. Where does lord, where does the concept, the idea of lord come from? Well, it comes from feudal, from feudalism. It is an aristocrat. It is not somebody who's owned the land. It is somebody who inherited it, somebody who stole it, somebody who took it and maintains it and then has people on the land who he pays nothing to or very little to who 
cultivate it, and he gets all the benefits from it. Our understanding of capitalism and our understanding of renter-owner relationships is very much shaped by the idea of feudalism. The whole idea that, that the Marxists constantly deploy is that, you know, only the, um, it's the manual labors that actually do the work. It's landlords and capitalists and CEOs, they do nothing. They contribute nothing. And therefore, it's unjust. The whole argument against capitalism is it's unjust. And they take that from feudalism. Because under feudalism, there was a truth to that. The feudal law did nothing other than raise armies, abuse his serfs, tax them, take their stuff. And basically, feudalism is a negative sum game. Marx and his ilk, while Marx understood that capitalism was an improvement out of feudalism, he never abandoned the feudalistic way of looking at the world. Never abandoned the feudalistic way of looking at the world. And thus, all transactions where somebody has money and somebody doesn't, all transactions of employer-employee, all transactions of renter-owner, are viewed through the lens of negative sum, are viewed through the lens of the landlord wins at the expense of the renter. The landlord contributes nothing. He's gaining profit without contributing anything. And everything I've read about this is not criticism from the right. It's criticism from the left that it doesn't go far enough. And what the left would like is actually the moratorium on rent to be forever. They want to hand over these condos to the renters. They don't believe in ownership. They don't believe in property rights. We talked about this on the previous show about looting. The left doesn't believe, or the, the, the far left doesn't believe in private property. And they just want to hand it over because they view the relationship as fundamentally exploitative. But is it? In what way is the renter, rentee, is rentee the word? Renter landlord. In what way, CKJ, thank you. That is very generous. In what way is that a value-added relationship? In what way is that a win-win relationship? Well, think about it. If I'm renting, it means I either don't want to buy or can't afford to buy. It means that for whatever reason, it makes more sense for me in that point in life for me to be renting something than buying it. I can't afford it. Can't, don't have the credit rating to get a mortgage. I don't have a steady job. Or I'd rather not pay somebody else interest and I'd rather just pay rent. But it's a choice you make. How do rental properties come into existence? Well, somebody has to build them. Somebody has to develop them. Somebody has to have the foresight, the imagination to, and, and you see this, I mean, I was just in, I'm in Orange County, not just in driving around here. There's been a lot of building of multifamily units for rent. Why? Because there's huge demand by renters. But somebody has to build them. They don't just pop into existence. One of the things that all socialists do is they assume wealth in any form just pops into existence. And then the only question is, how do we distribute it? But no, somebody has to have the capital, often raises it by renting, by, uh, sorry, borrowing the money, has to have the imagination, the foresight, has to go through all the regulatory craziness to actually get permitted and to get approved. Then he has to hire contractors, has to organize the contractors, supervise the contractors, and actually get the project built. And if I, I'm, I don't know if you guys know this, but in a previous life, and I mean, what is it? Um, 
how, uh, 35, six, seven years ago, I was a civil engineer. So I know a little bit about this, but a little bit as compared to my developer friends who knows a huge, I mean, it's complex work. Negotiating with contractors, supervising contracts, overseeing contractors. So the development phase is massive. Then you have to go out there and rent the properties. And you have to find people who are going to be responsible, who are going to be good, who are going to be good tenants. And then you have to manage the property. You have to take care of it. And you have to cultivate it. And you have to market the property. And you have to replace the tenants. And you have to constantly do this work, clean it, deal with deal with bad tenants, deal with loud tenants, deal with obnoxious tenants, deal with filthy tenants. You have to deal with problematic tenants. There's a huge amount of work, massive amounts of capital deployed, huge amounts of effort and time and thought that goes into building and maintaining properties for rent. You'd think Donald Trump would know this. After all, it's part of what he used to do at a very high end, but that's part of what he used to do. The one virtue I think Donald Trump has is he's good at developing real estate for rent. So basically, landlords, because of the zero-sum connotation, they are considered... I don't know, one of my landlord friends, uh, developers, told me that he thinks landlords are considered lower than bankers. And now that's low, because we as a culture really have a low opinion of bankers. Because, again, banking, because of our kind of feudal understanding of economics, is viewed as a zero-sum game. So you have business leaders, they're awful, because it's all zero-sum, it's only the workers who actually produce anything. Then you have bankers, and then you have landlords, hated in our society. It's, and you're seeing it now, because Trump can get away with this. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to defend the landlord. And if they do defend a landlord, it'll be the one landlord they know who might be middle class or lower middle class or maybe owns a house and is renting it out. They'll certainly not defend the big developer landlords who own, you know, thousands of units. Oh, no, no. We can't defend the rich. And this is altruism. This is altruism in action. We cannot defend the successful. We cannot defend the prosperous. We cannot defend those who seem like they're rich. And they might not be because a lot of the properties might actually be mortgaged. And if they don't have income, <laughs> they're not rich at all. Suddenly they can't even afford to keep the properties. How are they going to pay their mortgages? So morally, morally, landlords provide all of us an incredibly service. They are productive individuals. Even on a small scale, if you just buy a house and maintain it and rent it out to people and keep it intact, you're providing a service to people who want it and need it. And that is a productive function, and they are moral for being productive. And yet, just like the Democrats, just like the left, the right today doesn't care. They are just sacrificial animals to be sacrificed on an altar of those who need. Somebody said, somebody challenged me that we're not living through an orgy of altruism. It's exactly what we're living through. Trump is playing to the altruism of the masses with the hope of getting their votes. And he'll surely further play when they allocate $100 million to pay it back. And if they don't, how are these landlords ever going to get the money back? How are people ever going to afford to pay them back? Now, granted, the government has caused this situation. We are in this mess because of the government's failure to deal with COVID, because of the government's failure 
to deal with this disease because they shut us down because Trump showed, well, I'm not going to go into the whole thing. It's, you know, the, the situation we're in today economically is Trump's fault together with the governors who have destroyed this economy for no reason because of COVID. Because they didn't take it seriously. They didn't do what is necessary. And they're still not doing what is necessary. Because of government bureaucracy, government red tape, government disaster, and government, lack of government planning, and lack of government execution. And who's going to pay for it? Landlords. Landlords. And when... Not if, but when they allocate a hundred billion dollars to give renters a check to pay the landlords. Now the landlords, if they survive until then, will get their money. The renters will have paid off, so they'll get to keep the rent. Who are we allocating it all to then? Well, current and future taxpayers. A massive redistribution of wealth, together with the loads of trillions of dollars that are already being redistributed, that are already we in debt. We're just layer after layer after layer of sacrifice. We sacrifice the landlords to the renters. We sacrifice uh, taxpayers, future taxpayers, to renters and landlords. And it just goes on and on. At the end, the only people that can be sacrificed are all of us. At the scale that they're doing, they have to sacrifice all of us. All of us. Right. <sighs> so it's just, you know, what is the difference? Tell me this. Here's, here's a question for you. What is the difference between breaking into Louis Vuitton and stealing the bags and telling landlords they can't evict people if they don't pay the rent, basically telling renters they don't have to pay the rent. What's the difference? Renters and the, the owners of Louis Vuitton have a lot of money. Poor people are getting the benefit. How can you condemn looting and not condemn this? This is looting on a grand scale. This is looting of all landlords. What's the difference? The one comes from government and the other comes, the other one is just spontaneous. The one is the one, in a sense, the looting goes against the law. This is consistent with the law. Which is worse? When the law allows for looting? When the law allows for looting? Is that worse or better? I'll leave that to you to decide. What is worse? Organized government-sponsored looting? Or just emotionalist breaking windows, grabbing stuff looting? I'm most scared of the government type. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair cynicism and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, 
uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx. Uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.